So New York Fashion Week is over and what were some of the big learnings? Well guys, let me tell you, announcing today just after New York Fashion Week, Henry Bendel's is going to be closing 23 of its stores as well as its website. Now this comes not as a big surprise to a lot of people following the retail industry. Henry Bendel's has gone through quite a few iterations. Do you guys remember when they used to sell a lot of high price point luxury goods? took a turn to then starting to sell private label, and now we're seeing that the brand is floundering. This is not the only surprise that's coming out of New York Fashion Week. In addition to that, we're actually seeing a total shift in the way that consumers and influencers are relating to Fashion Week presentations. Now, some of you guys might have been hearing or watching some of the shows that Rihanna put on, Rihanna Savage, by Fenty, as well as the V-File show. So these are actually experiential shows that to some people felt a little random. You had lots of different music, you had performances. In fact, guys, it felt a little bit more like a show, an experiential show, than necessarily a fashion runway show. Now, other big trends coming out. Chromat, one of the biggest pioneers in body positivity and inclusivity, had an amazing show. Afterwards, people were so excited. They had implemented the buy now, wear now strategy right from the runway, as well as the Rihanna collection. Now, those of you guys might know that Rihanna actually had her show go on a little bit later than recently um, than announced. So it was originally slated to go on at 7.30. It went on about 8.15. And what's so funny is that they actually were trying to time the release of the collection so consumers could buy the collection right after the show. But what ended up happening? Well, product went live before the show even started. <clears throat> now, you might say to yourself, what's the big deal about that? Well, the big deal is that if you took a look in the review section of the products, you were seeing that products that went live literally five, 10 minutes ago had amazing reviews. Those reviews were saying how great the fit was, how great the fabrication was, how they're gonna purchase the product again. Now guys, how is that possible, right? Fashion show goes on 45 minutes late, no big deal, happens all the time in fashion. However, these product reviews are actually problematic. This actually points to a trend that we will actually be looking a little bit more into as far as retail strategy and what brands are doing, but you guys wanna pay attention to product reviews. Now, normally speaking, I would say it's not common or really hasn't been bubbled up to the surface that product reviews have been strategically planted just so obviously. However, as a brand strategy, it's important to understand that obviously these things happen and how you time them out and how you use them really does need to be planned far in advance. So lots of amazing things coming out of New York Fashion Week. Obviously, Christian Siriano putting his first foot forward in terms of support for Cynthia Nixon. Unfortunately, you guys may have seen that she actually did not win in the primaries, but we're seeing brands get more political. We're seeing brands take a stand be more in line with social justice. This also comes right around the time of the Nike Kaepernick ad, again, putting a step forward for social justice. And guys, as we continue to see things evolve, we see things like, you know, Henry Bendel's going down and branded collaborations, social justice, and all those great things that take our world forward going up. So any correlation? Maybe not, maybe yes. But guys, it's time for the old brands to take note. It is time to stand for something. It is time to speak your truth to your audience. Millennials, Gen Zs, they want to know what you stand for and they want a product that is special. All right, guys, talk to you later. Have a great day. Bye.